What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com. In today's video, we're gonna talk about a new feature contained inside of Flex Tools that allows you to create fencing. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so we've talked a lot about Flex Tools in the past. I will link to some videos about Flex Tools if you wanna learn more. But basically, it's a dynamic components extension that you can use in order to quickly create everything from like doors to windows to ramps. And now they have a new feature or a new component for fencing. And so this feature allows you to quickly add dynamic fencing components into your models and then adjust them. And when you adjust them, they're going to dynamically adjust in order to fit into the space that you've set them on. So let's check this out a little bit further. First off, there's a blog post on their website, which I will link to in the notes down below, that talks through exactly how all of this works, the different parts and pieces, the different layouts, things like that. And so there's four different styles of fence that you can create. And so when you create them, what you do is you right click in these and you can, um, you can edit the options using the dynamic components and the component options. And so if you look at this, you can see how there's a number of different things that you can adjust, but specifically, I wanna look at the different layouts. So there's four different kinds of layouts. So there's pickets between the posts and inline centered, um, between the posts, inline equal spacing. So what that's going to do is the spacing is going to be a little bit different on those. So one of them is going to be centered, one of them is going to be equally spaced along this uh, equally spaced along this length. And then you have two other options. So you have the option for pickets between the posts and beside the rails, or you have pickets beside the posts, which means that your pickets are gonna be on the front side of your fence. So you can kind of play around with this to get different results um, if you decide that you wanna do that. But in general, those are the four layouts that are contained inside of this tool. And so let's say we wanted to create a fence that follows a path. So one thing that you might do is you might um, draw out your path first. So you might put a line on the ground like this, showing where you want your fence to go, um, just so that you can kind of follow along with it. Um, but what you would do is you would start by coming in here and just adding a flex fence component and placing it on this point right here. So if I place it on this point and then I scale it out like this, what it's gonna do is it's gonna resize so that your pickets follow along in here. And so what I would do in this situation is I would create a copy right here. So I'm just gonna use the move tool in copy mode to do that. I'm gonna go ahead and scale it down just for a second so that it's a little easier to deal with. But the first thing we wanna do is we're gonna have two posts on this corner, right? Well, we don't really want that. So what we can do is we can use the interact tool right here to click on this post and the post is gonna go away, which is what we want because we want only one post right here. But then you could just take this and you could just align it so that it's coming off of this corner right here. And then you could turn it so that it aligns with this path like this. So now we're aligned and we can use the scale tool in order to make this the right length. And notice how this is gonna come in here and this is gonna add your posts automatically. So then we're just going to do the same thing. So we'll just take this and we'll just turn this so that it aligns with our path right here. Then we'll just scale it so that it aligns with this corner. And then just do the same thing. And so one thing you might notice though is you get this kind of weird gap right here. Well, we can adjust this gap by adjusting the options for the component itself. And so the way that we would do that is we would come into our dynamic component options. So right click and go to our component options. And then if we scroll down, um, we want the option for connect. And in this case, we're going to select the option for right to pick it. So when you do that, what that's gonna do is that's gonna extend this out by the length of the face of the pickets right here. So what that's gonna do is that's gonna allow us to close this off just like this. So you can see how you can use these fences in here, or you can use these options in here to make a continuous fence along a path. And so there's a ton of different options in here that you can use in order to um, adjust the way that your fences are created. So for example, um, if I right click on this and go to our component options, actually I already have that open. So you could adjust, for example, the width of your pickets. So let's say I wanted these to be, or these are my posts actually, um, but you could adjust the width of your pickets down here as well. So let's say you wanted these to be more like three quarters of an inch. You could come in here and type that value and then these pickets are gonna resize, 
right? So these are now a different size, which also affects your spacing. So you can also affect the spacing of your posts. So let's say you wanted this to be every 48 inches or something like that. You could adjust that right here. And notice how this is gonna continue um, just readjusting your posts in here based on that spacing. So you could adjust that. You could add some other things. I'm actually gonna take my post back to like 96 inches. But if you turn your advanced options on, there's some other options down below. So you could set this, for example, to arch. So you could set this so that it curves up with your posts. So if you wanted this to have this curving arc on that, you can do that. So you could also adjust the picket tops like this. So there's different tops in here that you can use for the top of your fence. So you can see how there's a ton of stuff that you can adjust with these fencing options. And again, there's more information in this blog post, which I will link to in the notes down below. But I do wanna talk a little bit about using this with stairs. So there's no native way to make this, uh, there's no native way to make this work with your stairs. But what you can do is you can use this in conjunction with Fredo scale and the box shearing in order to make this line up. So let's say for example, that I've got this set of stairs right here and it's six feet from this point to this point. So what I'm gonna do is, first of all, I've scaled this so that it's aligned with this end, but then I'm gonna set my post spacing so that I know this is gonna be aligned with my stairs. So if this is gonna be at six feet, then this one needs to be at three feet. So I can set my post spacing to 36 inches like this. Well, then you could use Fredo Scales box shearing, which is this option right here, or box planar shearing, in order to set this so that it aligns down. And you wanna make sure that you scroll in and you select this end option right here. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna shear this down till it aligns with this point. And then you're just gonna click. So what that's done is that's taken this and it's adjusted it so everything follows along with the stair. Now I will note that there is some manual stuff that needs to be done to fix this. So what you could do, right, is you could come in here for your posts and you could use the rotate tool in order to rotate them like this. So you could definitely do that. But that's a lot of manual geometry editing and so what I would do for something like this um, is instead of coming in here and manually editing your geometry, and I guess those were components in here, I would just make these a little taller than they need to be and then just move them down so that they're inside of your stair like this. So then you don't have to do all that manual geometry editing and you've got this nice rail that follows along with this stair but you can kind of spend as much time on that as you want to. All right, so that's where I'm gonna end this video. I have a link to a couple other videos I've done about flex tools in the past, as well as flex tools in the description down below. But leave a comment below, let me know what you thought. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.